Historians say that the city of Mehriz in Yazd province was built by a woman, Mehr Negar, the daughter of Anushirvan, the most famous Sasanid king, more than 16 centuries ago. For me, this fact was attractive enough to plan a trip to this hot and humid region of Iran. به دلیل اینکه مهریز در مسیر جاده ریب کرمان بوده و از طرفی به عنوان ورودی اصلی شهر یزد به شمار می اومده به همین جهت قلعه ها، کاروانسرا و چاپارخانه های متعددی تو این منطقه بنا شده و حتی مهریز رو به چهل قلعه نسبت دادن و هر کدوم این قلعه کاربری های خاصی داشتن بعضی از قلعه ها بزرگتر بودن و کاربری های مهمتری داشتن مثل کاربری نظامی و بعضی ها دیگه مثل قلعه مرپادین هم کاربری مسکونی داشتن و نگهداری قلات و انبار از اونا استفاده می شده. Located somewhere outside the city, the structural facade of the castle is quite visible even from afar. Some say that the Mehrpadin castle was built during the Safavid period, while others date it back to the time of the Mongol invasion of the region. The castle was built for the sole purpose of safeguarding the lives and possessions of future generations from possible attacks. The castle has two defensive lines with nine circular towers. These two walls reach five meters in height and a large ditch has been dug all around them. This is truly a beautiful mud brick castle that was active up to a few decades ago. There are different spaces within the castle including stables, residential areas and public and royal storehouses. The royal residence is located above the castle entrance with a clear view of both the interior and the exterior of the castle. The watchtowers are about 9 meters high with designs and shooting caches. The castle had more than 150 rooms where people hid their supplies. The interesting thing is that the current owner of these rooms lives here with the locals. Each room belongs to one family. We move a short distance away from the city to get to the small village of Ernan, here among the mountains in search of the footprints of humans whose historical presence in the region goes beyond Mehrnegar and the Sasanid kings. Mount Ernan and the petroglyphs on its sedimentary rocks take us back to the Iron Age, to a time that is artfully narrated to us by the then inhabitants of this region. هر جا که شما سنگ نگاره بزرگویی دیدید بدونید که در کنارش یک چشمه آبی و محلی برای زندگانی بوده و ایرانیان معمولا میمدن در کنار چشمه ها و جایگاهی که آب از اونجا خارج می شده خب این سنگ نگاه را ایجاد میکردن برای اینکه هم به عنوان یک محلی باشه که تقدس داشته هم اینکه فعالیت هایی که انجام میدن از جمله شکار و زندگانی را به صورت یک سنگ نگاره ایجاد می‌گیرند. The images depicted through these petroglyphs are usually in the shape of humans, animals and birds and are actually quite realistic. In each and every corner of Iran, between the mountains and the cliffs, one can see the remnants of the art and craft of the distant past as petroglyphs. just like an album, 
an album that forms part of our identity as human beings, the messages of which must be well preserved. Iran is littered with amazing locations, magnificent sites with many attractions worth visiting. Iran's National Botanical Garden is embraced with all sorts of plants, trees and flowers, an infinite palette of texture and shades that turns this garden into a glorious work of art. This land is most and foremost a scientific centre, where plants and trees are collected and cultivated for display, research and education. So how big is it? Well, the garden is about 145 hectares, the biggest in the Middle East and of course one of the best in the world. The garden has 25 collections as well as more than 4,000 different species of plants. Iran has a special ecosystem due to various factors including different climatic conditions, high mountains all around and a large desert in its centre. So we're talking about a wide range of plant species, in fact, around 8,000 types. In this garden, different varieties of plants, including the ornamental and cultivated ones, wild, medicinal of economic importance and of various geographical regions, are kept. Among the designed spaces in this garden are seven habitats of Iran. They are Hirkani, Zagros, Southern Alborz, Iran's Plains and Deserts, Greenhouse of Southern Iran, Persian Rock and Ornamental Gardens, and Local Fruit and Flower Gardens. The Caspian climate is one of the oldest sections of the Iran National Botanical Garden. For those who love the aroma of the jungles of northern Iran, then this place is probably their favourite. About 60 different species of trees, as well as about 30 different species of shrubs, have been planted here. Let's have a look. The Caspian region is a great belt stretching over the northern slopes of Alborz mountain ranges and covering the southern coasts of the Caspian Sea. This area receives more than 1,000 mm of rain annually, and so no wonder it's packed with lush forests and green plains everywhere. In addition to the habitats, eight collections and one private garden is included in this complex. One collection, for instance, is the medicinal plant section, which covers an area of five hectares and displays Iran's medicinal and industrial vegetation based on their usage. Professor Ajari works in the systematic garden, one that is made specially for educational purposes and serves as a basis for all fields related to phytology. The systematic garden is about 8 hectares. The systematic garden is a part of a garden that has a very important part of the garden. The garden is a garden that 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 is گرایش های مختلف مهندسی کشاورزی و منابع طبیعی و داروسازی و سایر رشته هایی که مرتبط با گیاهان هستند اینجا در واقع میتونه بهترین کلاس آموزشی برای این رشته ها باشه There are all sorts of plants here with different growing conditions but they don't just belong to Iran. You can enjoy global climate and international gardens made right here in small samples. My favorite, the Chinese and the Japanese section.
ویژگی هایی که باقی چین و ژاپن داره این که ترکیب شده از ترکیب سنگ، آب، آلاچی، پل، جزیره و گیاهانی که رنگ های مختلف رو در فصول سال به خودشون میگیرن و بومی شرق آسیا یا همون چین و ژاپن قدیمی باشه Apart from this section, other global habitats include Europe, Meadows of America, Caucasus and the Himalayas. Iran's National Botanical Garden is not only of great value to researchers, foresters, horticulturists and scientists, but also to millions of people who seek peace and shelter in its atmosphere, away from everyday busy life. Hodelesky for Iran.